Good morning, folks. Top story for the U.S. weather is the cold coming to exacerbate a near-record-setting Great Lakes ice total. We're on the precipice of new territory, and the major cold wave is returning to the area today and tomorrow, starting way up in the upper atmosphere. It's already frigid compared to that warm-up that ended last week. Some good news, though. See that low in the Pacific. California's best drought mitigation in months is likely on the way as it settles in later in the week. Still have the chances for some thunderstorms in the southeast. Next we go to the southwest Pacific. Convergence extending from Tasmania that will move east today to New Zealand and there's still moisture draw into the atmosphere over northern Australia for major rain. Visualized on the enhanced infrared satellite images here. That storm cell that hit Europe wasn't fun, but appears to be less damaging than the previous storms. Tough folks across the pond, weather share if it got bad for you. We've been expecting a solar uptick for a few days with Neptune conjoining the Sun and Mercury, Venus and Mars maintaining a multi-week conjunction. Add in the beast sunspot group on the limb and the ingredients mixed perfectly. We took the largest solar flare since March of 2012 and just watch the shape and form of this erupting plasma. Does that look familiar to anyone? It's a baby version of what I envisioned the mega flare solar kill shot would look like. If any of you haven't seen How to Watch the Sun, it's pretty much essential for this channel and solar watching in general. The kill shot might be X40, this was just an X4.9, but still a phenomenal feat of flaring for our weakening sun. The CME will likely miss our planet, but the X-ray radiation from the flare itself did cause a radio blackout over much of the West Pacific. That has now waned, which you can see here, but you should also notice some polar energy signatures. That's a proton bombardment. We often see solar energetic particles, or polar radiation storms, during larger flare events even without our magnetic connection being affected. The protons are something to watch today. The solar wind is fairly calm at the moment. Even the sensitive metrics are regaining their smooth curves to show that quiet. Quick sunspot watch. The departing group did have a small M flare yesterday morning at the red negative southern development. The traditional spreader on the north has not yet produced central umbras and no flaring. Last but not least, bipolarity housed within one penumbral region is also known as a delta class active region, the most dangerous for flaring, and the beast has got it. Remember the planets are also an earthquake concern along with the current earth facing coronal hole. Yesterday we saw that the global baseline of 4.5 magnitude showed the ramp was taking its slow old time, but last night it became impatient, began tearing up the crust beneath the Arabian Sea. Last night's challenge stands. Free membership for the life of the website to anyone who can show me an equivalent level of foreshocking without a resulting larger tremor. Quakes, flares, and weather. Oh my. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.